Hello and welcome to our video summarising all you need to know about Lucy Preble's play Enron and more specifically all you need to know when it comes to analysing the key characters, themes and symbols within this play. Now when it comes to the context of the play, this play is based on a real event, it's the Enron scandal which happened and it's contemporary meaning it's very modern and it was written at a time when many large companies were being exposed for corporate scandal and mistrust in large corporations was growing. Enron was a huge American energy and services company based in Texas and it was convicted of financial fraud and it went bankrupt. When it comes to understanding the main characters of this play, the first is Kenneth Lay. He's chairman and CEO of this company between 1986 and 2002. He sold off over $300 million of his Enron stock whilst, on the other hand, encouraging his employees to buy up more stock, which shows just how lascivious and duplicitous he is as a character. He was eventually found guilty of fraud, and before he was sentenced, he died of a heart attack in Colorado. Jeffrey Skilling is the other key character in this play. Uh, he started off as a CEO of Enron Finance Corporation, and he was hired directly by Kenneth Lay. He became president and COO of Enron. He focused mainly on Enron's trading energy and he traded energy as part of the company, but they didn't actually produce any energy. He began a system of accounting where they wrote every contract onto the books as a profit, making Enron appear highly valued. However, this was incredibly hollow as a lot of these contracts were not necessarily seen through. He resigned in 2001 and sold all his stock and he was convicted of fraud and insider trading. So do bear in mind but that both the characters of Lay and Skilling are actual real life characters and the play does stay very much true to their role in this company. Andy Fastell is another important character and he was promoted to chief financial officer in 1998. He created shadow companies to hide Enron's losses and so accounting books still showed huge profits even if the company was making massive losses. And he was convicted of fraud, however he was acquitted or he got off easier for testifying and revealing the workings of his fellow executives. The character who has been made up for this play is a lady called Claudia Rowe and she's the executive in charge of the financial division and she represents several of the rural women who were caught up in the scandal who unbeknownst to them were working within a company that was really a shell of its success. Ramsey and Hewitt are other fictional characters or rather fictional firms which are created as part of the play and they're a law firm. We also have Arthur Anderson which was a real accounting firm that lots its license because of the Enron audit. We also meet Cheryl Sloman, who's an analyst at Citigroup. There's also JP Morgan, which is a large American bank that was heavily invested in this company. Irene Grant is another Enron employee who lost her job. In terms of the theme to be aware of when it comes to analysing this play, the first is the theme of greed. So like some of the other plays you've read in school, like Dr Faustus, for instance, this play deals with the idea of greed and corruption. Uh, and this time in a business setting. So a really, really good play to contrast this with is Dr. Faustus, as you see a lot of similarities between the main characters in each play. Greed for more profits and immediate money is what ruins Enron, and greed is also what leads to most of the players to sell their stocks while encouraging others to keep buying. This greed does end with most players being in jail, and it ruins the lives of many of its employees, a lot of innocent bystanders. Failure of oversight is another key theme. So there are many organisations and entities that are responsible for stopping things like the Enron scandal from happening. So for example, the SEC, which is a government agency in America, the banks, the auditors and investors should all have noticed something was awry, but they didn't. And some of them willingly turned a blind eye to the misdealings. Elitism and class is another important theme to be aware of. So the executives at Enron were very well connected politically and very high ranking from a social perspective. They were what we could, would consider the top class in society. And they not only failed to help the lower classes, but they purposely ruined them by encouraging them to buy up stocks which they knew were bad. 
They exploited people's naivety, which led to people developing a real mistrust in large corporations and the social elite that lead them. In terms of analysis, the first is the use of animals in the play. So some of the characters in the play are depicted as animals. For example, the company's board are mice and the fake companies where Enron, Enron hid debts are lizards. Arthur Anderson are ventriloquists and the Lehman Brothers are Siamese twins that can't make decisions. Darwinism is another important theme, obviously uh, taken from Charles Darwin's Survival of the Fittest. So Skilling is portrayed as a Darwinist and atheist, which is what he uses to justify tricking naive investors into buying bad stocks. In the wild, wild west of business, from his perspective, it's really the weakest who don't know enough that will, su will not survive and he can survive as a result of this. He also wants profit very quickly, saying that life is short and he wants his wealth while he can get it. Darwinism is the idea that the strongest of a species survive while the weaker ones must die off. And ironically, actually, Enron eventually becomes one of the weaker species and they die as a company. So that's it. If you found this video useful, do subscribe and give us a thumbs up. But also make sure you check out www.firstratetutors for a detailed revision sheet that goes into much more depth on this play. Thank you so much for listening.